<laughs> hey guys, it's Kelly, and today I am so excited to bring you a 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokee L. This is Jeep's third row SUV. It's the fifth generation of the Grand Cherokee, and we are going to dive into it. If this is your first time joining me, hey, I'm Kelly, and I'm the car mom. I review cars for moms and for families. I do not take Jeeps off-roading, though, so if you are looking to hear about the suspension that goes up and down and how it go well it goes over like rocks and mountains, you're going to have to find a different video because I'm here to talk about car seats and cup holders and things to matter to moms like me. So let's get into it. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited I can't even handle it. Overland trim level today, which means we have a lot of fun bells and whistles to talk about. It also means it's expensive. This one has an MSRP of $60,000. So let's look at it through the lens of something that costs $60,000 and see if it lives up to that because at that price, we're competing with some luxury cars. So let's see, Jeep. Let's start the beautiful seven slotted grille. Very Jeep. It's been like this for a very long time. I really love it. I love the chrome around it, the kind of like honeycomb esque things. Some really subtle hood lines, not a lot of like harsh creases or anything. Overall, a really beautiful, I mean, I can't stop looking at her. I'm honestly checking her out and I'm very excited about it. Let's move to the side profile. Very sporty. It feels so much bigger, so I'm really excited to actually play with the space inside. We've got some great two-toned wheels that look really great. A cool little pinstripe, Grand Cherokee badging right here with a little American flag. That's darling, is what that is. Some great chrome right here, some chrome roof rails. I really like how it's chrome here but it's black here, just kind of lifts the car a little bit. I think that looks great. Chrome on the door handles. I mean, I'm just, I mean, she's darling, honestly. She, I'm sure she doesn't want to be described as darling. She is sassy. She is sexy. I don't know, she's cute, I'm here for her. Let's move around to the back. It has the Jeep logo right here. Is it just me or like, is the Jeep font just like not really it for me? I'm probably being way too picky. Anyway, moving down, we've got the little L badging, a four by four. This chrome bar right here, not totally obsessed with, but it's okay. Some tail lights down here. We got some exhaust pipes on either side. Yep, all two of them. So anyway, exterior, she's great. I really like the exterior. It is sporty. It looks totally different than the other Grand Cherokees. It's definitely fresh, it's definitely updated, but let's talk about the interior. Oh my God, this is honestly a live reaction of me sitting in this car for the very first time. Oh my gosh. I really like it. It is so luxurious in here. Let's start with the door panel. I love this like kind of grayish brown wood trim, massaging seats, memory seats, this beautiful like chrome bar that kind of swoops around it. We've got great contrast stitching on the door with some high gloss black as well. Side cubbies, that's what you're here to talk about. I went, I went a little more conservative today. I brought my simple modern water bottle. So that works. That doesn't work. That's honestly very shallow. I'm not quite sure what I'd put there but one side cubby, I'll take one. It's better than none. Moving on to, oh my gosh, I just need to take a minute. <sighs> okay, moving on to the interior. She is not disappointing me. Let's start her up. Oh my gosh, there's so many screens. Oh my gosh. <gasps> Anyway, the steering wheel controls, they're kind of like a high gloss black. There's actually a lot of high gloss black all around here. It's called like those, that like piano key kind of black. It's beautiful, it's fingerprint city. So keep a microfiber towel in your center console or in your glove blocks and just kind of move on with your life. But great steering wheel controls. We've got a 10 inch display right here that looks amazing. Kind of that wood trim coming into here again. Seats, very firm. They're very firm. Let's turn on the massagers. Normally I think massaging seats are one of the most overrated features in a car. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. It massages, but like, it's not like, it's not a deep tish. It's not really doing anything for me. Um, let's get you on this side and let's just break down some more of this interior. Okay, I'm sorry. Like I've had a minute, I've sat with it. I am just really impressed with how nice it feels in here. 
Okay, let's dive in. I told you the dash is completely digital. That's absolutely stunning. Love these little buttons up here. That's kind of a fun place to put them. That kind of would get very cold or very hot. So maybe watch that. We've got like our auto off, our lane departure control, our traction control, brakes, parking sensors, everything right there. Then we move into this beautiful, completely colored touch screen display that goes nicely into all of our, all of our climate controls. In this trim, we have ventilated seats, heated seats, a heated steering wheel, everything I could ask for. Wireless charger, two USBs, a USB-C, a 12 volt, and then this is where I get a little confused. This is all like the different driving modes. So you can raise and lower the suspension. You can like decide if you're running on snow, sand, or rocks. Again, it's not my forte. I'm gonna spend a lot of time talking about the car seat setup when we get to it. So you gotta find a different video for all this. Cup holders, they're fine. I mean, they're just fine, honestly. Nothing crazy there. And then we move into the center console. Not a bad size. It's pretty small, actually. This is my, my iPhone 11 for reference. So I mean, it fits in there okay, but you know, it's not huge. This isn't necessarily like the biggest six or seven passenger car out there. You know, I'm kind of comparing this to a car like, like the Ford Explorer, like the Hyundai Palisade. It's definitely of that, like that kind of size. Let's talk a little bit more about the display and some of the things that you can do in it. Just really gorgeous. I love this split, this split screen right here. So you could have like your navigation and your radio going at the same time. Obviously it's going to come with the Apple CarPlay and the Android Auto. Really, I mean, it just has, seems to be very user-friendly display and it's just really beautiful to look at. I love that, I think it's integrated so nicely. I love that it's built in. I love how this bridge kind of comes down. Wish they gave me like a purse holder right there. It's like, I feel like you already did it. This one comes with the Macintosh sound system. It's kind of cute. The speakers are actually sticking out right there. Sound system is probably incredible in this car. I mean, yeah, I am, see like, look at all this high gloss black. That is just fingerprint city. So again, it's fine, but like by the time you do, and like who would ever do this? Like I would never live in a world where I have both of these down, but just something to be aware of. So a couple of other fun features to talk about. Now, I've seen like other videos circulating the internet. I guess this one doesn't have it. We've searched for a while, but it does have the backseat camera. I mean that there's a camera somewhere on the ceiling and it can show you your kids and what they're doing back there. We don't have it on this particular model. It sounds really cool, but if this one's already $60,000 and doesn't have it, I'm a little less interested in the feature. One thing I do like though is this rear view camera. So not a rear view mirror, but a rear view camera. So especially if we're gonna have bigger kids back there or car seats or people blocking it, this gives you a way to see what's behind you without we're having to worry about car seat or people obstructions. We also, this is our little dial, isn't this kind of crazy? That's how we put it in reverse. Honestly, kind of a grainy camera if we're being honest, but that's okay, still works. And then we also have this beautiful panoramic sunroof, which, It just really, oops, I don't want to do that. It just really adds to the whole experience of the car. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, let's talk about the second row, the third row, the car seats, the strollers, the trunks, all of that stuff. Okay, so here's a shot of me in the second row of the new Jeep Grand Cherokee L. Let's talk about it. Um, you know, pretty decent space. It honestly doesn't feel huge. I have this seat set for myself at six feet tall, so I still have pretty good knee clearance. This is a little bit of a disappointment to me. Like, that's just such an afterthought. But moving on, we do have vents right here. So we have vents on the side, and we have some tiny vents on the back of the center console. So no ceiling vents, but that's this is better than having no vents there. I mean, I think it would still be good for circulation. I just prefer ceiling vents in a perfect world, especially for rear facing kids. If I look at my side cubbies down here, very tiny, like that doesn't work. That doesn't work. So that's a little disappointing, but it still is. I mean, absolutely beautiful. I love the speakers. We've got sunshades right here. We still kind of have that beautiful grayish brown wood trim. Let's talk some more about my amenities. We've got cup holders on the floor. I don't actually mind those because I like that they're like not in the aisle way. I have a problem with some cars like the Toyota Highlander, for example, that puts the cup holders literally where I would need to go. So that's okay. We've got two USBs, two USB-Cs, an outlet, heated seats, our own climate control, panoramic sunroof. I mean, we've got things back here. We've got things. Now we're doing the captain's chairs options today. Um, and I'm excited to talk to you guys about the car seat setup because it's, it's, it's interesting. I'll leave it at that. And we have lower anchors in both of these seats and then tether anchors in all four seats. So keep in mind, when you get the captain's chairs, this is only a six passenger car. What I wanna show you that I'm very excited about is that this car has what I call a car seat friendly tilt, meaning that you can access the third row even when you have big car seats. Now, of course, you could also do this 
by slithering around, but I think this makes it even easier. Let me show you. All right, now we're back in my wheelhouse. Let's talk car seats. So I have brought a Graco cool extended fit and I have installed it forward facing. One thing to note, the headrests are not removable. So you really wanna make sure you have a good install and that the car seat you're working with can get installed securely because them not being able to remove, it causes a little bit of complications. Now, another cool thing about this car, it has what's called a car seat friendly tilt. I freaking love this, ready? We pop this open, it tilts, you can get into the third row. It does not infect the integrity of the car seat. It's a 10 out of 10. I absolutely love it. Okay, and now just to give you an idea of space, I flipped this Graco Extended Fit rear facing. I have this seat set for myself at six feet tall because I'm impressed with the clearance. It is still good clearance. Tall drivers, this will work for you. Okay, so anyway, let's, let's get back to that third row. Let's, let's see what it's all about. Okay, so back in the third row, my amenities pretty good, USB and USB-C. I like that they're still giving us both because like I have one or two USB-C chargers, but like not enough to fit my whole car. So I like that I have the option there. We've got cup holders. We've got our own little cute windows. We've got vents. I've got a light. I'm pretty comfortable. I really like that they're only trying to fit two seats back here. I get really frustrated with manufacturers when they like try to throw a third seat back there and then someone's sitting on a literal crack. So this feels a lot more comfortable to me. Let's bring this thing back. Oh, you're kidding. I have so much room. So this must be with this seat. This seat's moved all the way forward. But I mean, look at this knee clearance. I mean, I have so, can you see that? I have so much knee clearance. Let's move this seat all the way back and see what we're working with. I mean, I'm honestly pleasantly surprised with how much room I have. This seat's all the way back. My knees still aren't, I mean, I'm honestly comfortable. This is pretty exciting, everyone. This aisle also, I mean, it's, I mean, yeah, it's pretty tiny. See, these aisles kill me. Like, I can't fit through here. I mean, it's gonna be, a, it's gonna be a thing. So I do like that we have that tilt. See, that's very nice. Can get in there very nicely. And then we can just pop, ooh. And then we can just pop right out. Pleasantly surprised. I also love that these are on tracks, both of these seats, so you can give more room to the second row or third row as needed. All right, let's talk about this trunk. I was actually surprised. I kind of thought this would be like the same size as the Acadia trunk. I'm currently driving in Acadia. This trunk is a lot bigger. This is a decent sized trunk. Uh, honestly, all things considered for the size of this car, I'm happy with how they distributed the space. We look in here. We've got a little something something, like a little bit of a container area. Honestly, not bad. I mean, it's something. We love just something to organize things. A little extra compartment right here. I have brought the Mockingbird stroller today. I did already take it apart because there was no way it's going to fit folded like that. So I'm going to see if I can fit the Mockingbird stroller into the trunk with the third row up. Yeah, I mean, that's not going to fit. Okay, so like, it's not going to fit. Like, these are going to cause an issue. That's going to cause an issue, let alone I haven't even tried to put the seat in. Um, yeah, that's not going to work. That's not going to work. I kind of thought it was a long shot anyway, to be honest with you, but let's put the trunk down. Let's put these seats down and then we'll see what we're working with. They're power seats right here. So really easy to put down and it's a press and release. I need, I, I need a press and release in my life. I could never sit there and hold something. Not as a mom of two. I could never do that. So great size trunk. I do always just want to make sure everyone knows and just caution everybody. When you drive with a car like this and you've got captain's chairs and you try to use this as your trunk, it does increase the risk of projectiles because now we have no barrier keeping, from, keeping us from the rest of the cabin. So when possible, I like to try to keep that third row up just because it's safer, but the stroller's not gonna fit. So let's just get that in there. So I mean, now the stroller fits great. Like I could fit this, I could fit the double bob, I could fit a week's worth of groceries, I could fit a Costco haul, I could fit just about anything. So that's good, but it's just, it's, it's a no-go with strollers with that third row up, but I still think it's a decent size, especially for like a week's worth of groceries or something. Like I'm not, I'm not mad at it. I'm, it's, it's on par, I'll say that. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the drive. You know, I'm not gonna say I took it under any rock, sand, mud, snow, or on a racetrack or anything, but just like ditzing around town, she did a pretty good job. We got her on the highway. I was impressed with the acceleration. I think the handling's really nice. It's a great driving car. I'm impressed with the, with how luxury it feels because it really does feel elevated. I don't feel like I'm in one of the Chrysler like products. I don't feel like they try to take any shortcuts. Um, it's maybe that's just what cars cost these days. I don't know. It's pretty expensive. Comment below about what you think. I think they're also just like trying to like wheel this out. So then when the Grand Wagoneer is a hundred thousand dollars, we've all had a chance to like sit with this for a second. 
Um, that's just my prediction. So anyway, guys, thank you so much for joining. Make sure you subscribe to my channel. Comment below about which car I should tour next. And please give this video a thumbs up. Thanks. Hey guys, let's build my very own 2021 Jeep Grand Cherokee L. So after comparing the trim levels, first of all, Jeep makes it super easy because you can just like kind of basically see the differences. I want to keep this as cost effective as possible because I do like the car from a car seat standpoint. Um, again, the performance is all not that important to me. So if I take that out of it, but I'm still looking for the comfort features that I'm looking for, I do think I need to go up to the limited trim if for nothing else but the power tailgate. Like I just can't be without the power tailgate so i did the overland trim i'm gonna try to stick to this one i just really can't. well first of all you need to go to this one to even get heated seats which was shocking to me but the good news is is all of these standard safety features come on the laredo which is the base so everything from um active lane management to automatic emergency braking blind spot with rear cross um backup camera parking sensor so i liked that everything came standard however i'm gonna move up so i can get heated seats and i want a power tailgate I'm gonna go back to the four x four, which means all wheel drive, and then I'm gonna build it. So the only base color you can get is white, which does not look bad, but nope. I mean, that looks nice. So, oh, okay, this is kind of fun. I'm gonna go with the, the gray, the dark gray. I think it looks really good with the chrome. You could upgrade to 20 inch wheels for 1400 bucks. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, significantly better. Whew. I'm still under 50. We're gonna go for it. We're gonna go for it. Okay, I'm gonna keep everything else the same. Let's move to my interior. Okay, so I can get black or I can get tan. Oh, I think the dark gray with the tan is actually super cute. And they're the same color. This would be if I wanted to get um, some upgrade leather, which I'm not going to. Oh, this is interesting. Second row, 6040 bench with manual tip and slide. That when the bench is more, but yeah, I want the bench. I didn't even know it came in a bench. The guys at the dealership made it seem like it didn't. What does the bench look like? This is so exciting. Okay, so it's like nothing to ride home about, but assuming that the bench, you can still get the car seat tilt in, which it says tilt and slide. So I'm gonna go for the bench. Yes, yes, that makes me so excited. Okay, packages. Anything else I want to add? This is tempting for the wireless charging, the sun shades, the ventilated seats, and the surround view camera, but $2,200. bucks. So this is where I struggle. Am I building my dream one or am I building bang for your buck? I think I'm going to do it. Because I, I think I'm going to do it. Oh, Jesus, please get me out of here. Powertrain, keeping it simple. Keeping it simple, simple, simple. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so that will bring my Jeep Grand Cherokee L to an M. Oh my gosh, it is good looking. Maybe I ditched the wheels to get that upgraded package. But that brings my Jeep Grand Cherokee L to an MSRP of 52520